Hi, I'm Pastor Todd, and I'm one of the associate pastors here at the Way World Outreach. And uh, today uh, we are continuing in our daily growth challenge devotional. Man, I hope you've been enjoying uh, the devotionals that have been going forth so far. We're moving right along. I want to encourage you to keep going. Don't quit now. Uh, today I'm going to be coming out of uh, James chapter 5, and I'm going to be dealing with verses 9 down through verse 12. And I'm going to be reading them out of the NLT version. Now, there's a lot in these scriptures. Uh, it seems uh, when I first read it that James was kind of all over the place. And I'm like, man, I got to bring all this together and get the nuggets out of here that are going to bless you during this time of devotion. Uh, and so I kind of set it up in, in a way that hopefully will walk you through it. Uh, again, there's a lot in these scriptures. Uh, and so James, uh, he's opening up these, this, this uh, uh, passage of scripture. I kind of want to do like a courtroom scenario, right? I want to do a courtroom scenario. And in this courtroom, Christ is the judge, right? So I'm going to do three scenes uh, that will help you understand what Christ is speaking to us about in these passages. My question for you is, uh, how many of you have ever been to court? Uh, seems like, you know, sometimes they're talking in riddles and you don't know exactly what's being said and you got to kind of ask somebody like, what are they talking about? That's kind of what these passages, this passage is like. Uh, but there is a lot of power in here and hopefully, uh, in the next few minutes we can break this down for you. Uh, and so, uh, so again, picture with me that you're in a courtroom and, uh, you're listening, uh, in this courtroom as I break down these verses of scripture, again, with Christ being the judge. Uh, and so before we go on, I'm going to have a quick word of prayer, and then we'll go to scene one. I'm going to do three scenes that are going to help you understand this passage, and we're going to jump into scene one just a moment. Father God, I just thank you for this word. Again, I pray that it, it penetrates the hearts and the minds of your people, and that they will not just be hearers of the word, but that they will be doers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so let's go to scene one. I... I Titled scene one, uh, do not grumble, do not grumble. And so here I'm going to uh, read uh, the first verse out of James chapter five and verse nine. And it says, do not grumble about each other. It says that brothers and sisters, or you will be judged for look, the judge is standing at the door. And now, so what it is here is Christ is, it says that to those that are in the courtroom, he said, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, do not grumble. Ladies and gentlemen, do not grumble, right? Uh, so what is this word grumble? To grumble is to complain about something uh, in a bad tempered way, right? So to grumble is to complain about something. And so uh, here it says that uh, uh, we, I said it this way, we are not to say bad things about our believing brothers and sisters in Christ especially when they're going through a battle or a, a difficult time or suffering in their lives. We are not to say bad things about them. And, uh, and so, of course, in this, in 9b, which is the second part of verse 9, he says, if you do, the judge is standing at the door. Who's the judge? Christ Jesus. Jesus is the judge and he's in this courtroom and he's telling people, look, when somebody is suffering, when a brother or sister in Christ is going through, we're not to judge. He is the judge, right? Uh, he goes on to say that, and I said it this way, who is a judge? What is a judge? A judge is someone authorized to do what? Hear and decide a case. So we need to understand when someone is going through, we're not to decide their case crisis to decide, right? And so then if that's the case, then what is our responsibility? Uh, before I go there to that next scene, I want to uh, give you a scripture here out of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1 and 2. It says, judge not that you not be judged. He says that for with the same judgment you judge, you will be judged, right? And with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And so it is so important that when we have a brother or sister struggling and going through a, a, a tough time in their life, we got to be careful that we don't come under condemnation and we become the ones being judged as a result of how we handle that situation. Uh, it says right here, uh, as we continue to look, it says, I, I wrote this, I said, understand this, with the same judgment or condemnation you judge others, you will be judged, right? And so I want to take you to uh, the next scene. This is scene two. And this is called, I, I, I titled this scene two, The Great Reward. The Great Reward, right? And so uh, here it is. The judge, he brings, in, in helping understand this portion of the scripture, 
uh, the judge here, he brings up a former case which explains why we shouldn't judge, right? And uh, that's going to come out of the next verses, out of uh, James chapter 5 and verse uh, 10 and 11. I'm going to read these verses, and, uh, uh, and we're going to pick up there and explain what he's referring to. So he says right here, for example, uh, of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, he says, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure suffering. He says that verse 11, for instance, you know about Job, a man, what, of great endurance. And you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. So verse 10, it speaks of the prophets of old and how they suffered for the sake of Christ. And as you have studied your scriptures, you know that there are many prophets that suffered for the sake of Christ and they went through difficulty. But today we want to kind of focus on a specific uh, individual that I want to say many of you have read the story about, but I'm not going to say all. I, I, had, I had a friend, I, I remember I was preaching one time and I was telling the story and, and I said, you all know the story. And I went on to, to the next point and he was like baffled. He said, man, I've never heard that story. So I'm not going to assume everybody heard the story. So I want to give you a little bit of uh, 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 just an overview of Job. Now, this man, Job, uh, he was a man uh, that, you know, uh, was the Bible speak of as a person who was blameless. Uh, that means that Job had a good reputation. The Bible spoke of Job as upright, which means he was a very honest person. He also feared God. That means he had a reverence and a respect for God. And he also talks about Job as a person who shunned evil or who stayed away from evil. Job lived right. Job had done nothing wrong, right? And then the second point about Job is that, as we know, Job suffered greatly in his life. But what was the, 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 the biggest part about this was how people responded to him. His friends grumbled about him as they didn't know the whole story. They became the judges, right? And as we know, Job's situation was only in that position because as we know that for those that have read the scripture, Job appeared before God and God literally asked uh, Satan, uh, Satan appeared before God, I want to say, and when Satan appeared before God, God asked Satan, had you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, I can't touch him. You got your hand on him, right? And so that's the story behind Job. And this is what led to his suffering and turmoil. But of course, the friends and all those around, not knowing his circumstance or his situation, began to judge him and accuse him of probably having sin in his life. And so this is the, the story of Job. But what happened with Job? There's a third point about Job. Job endured to the end. And he got back more than he lost during his time of suffering. You see, this scripture talks about Christ being what? The righteous judge. Christ's judgment is full of kindness and mercy. Christ's judgment is always about restoration. He, and he's always ready to reward those who endure suffering to the end. But as God is preparing to bless those who suffer and even go through tribulation and trial, if we become judges, we'll begin to forfeit uh, our blessings. And I just want to let you know that. I want to conclude this with scene number three. I hope you're following along. You're in a courtroom right now. And Jesus is the judge. Christ is the judge. And he's helping us to understand what our response is to be when another brother or sister is going through. So I'm going to conclude with scene number three. I, 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 this scene here, I said, do not swear. Do not swear. And I told you this passage seemed like it's all over the place, but it makes sense. And so I'm going to try to make sense of this. He says right here in uh, chapter 5 and verse 12, read with me, he says, But most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say simply yes or no, <laughs> so that you will not sin and be condemned. See, James is concluding this scene in this courtroom uh, as Jesus is the judge. He says to never take an oath and what? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Now, uh, what is an oath? What is an oath? An oath is, is, is to swear by something, right? So James is saying, he's, this is what he's saying, that our words 
or our conversation about those that are suffering reveals our spiritual condition, our condition, right? And so we got to be careful with the type of words that we're, we're saying, what we're swearing when somebody else is going through, because it, it literally shows our spiritual condition and where we are spiritually, right? It says right here, uh, and how many of us, uh, we do a lot of swearing in our conversation, right? In our conversing about the things that we just don't know, right? And so he said also what? Let your yes be yes and your no be no, right? Uh, man, this is really good. So uh, here I want to just say this. Many of you uh, has, uh, are know that in the courtroom, everything you say, it can and will be what? Held against you or you will be held accountable for it. And it says that what you say in court will be used against you. If anybody been in court, that's why we get lawyers and somebody to represent us. So we don't say something that will turn around and condemn us, right, with our own words. And this is what happens when we judge our brothers and sisters that we don't understand what they're going through. We end up bringing condemnation on ourselves. He says that when you're in a courtroom, you know, uh, you can't be filling around and trying to figure out what to say. You better know, you better, your yes needs to be yes and your no needs to be your no, right? A friend of mine, he was talking about being in court and uh, they, were, they were working on a settlement. And uh, he was instructed that if you don't have the right answer, the best thing to do is say, I don't know or I don't recall, <laughs> you know, because it's going to keep you out of trouble. If you don't have all the answers, you don't know the whole story, just Hey, I don't know. I don't recall. Right. It says right here. Uh, so what is James saying? James is saying, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Uh, my wife, uh, she always like asking me a question about something or maybe it, it might be something to eat or, or, or a place to go. And she'll ask me and all she wants is a yes or no answer. And I, I can't give her a yes or no. And I'm starting to give all these different reasons. She said, all I need is a yes or a no, right? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And so James is saying that right here in this verse. And so what does this mean? So what James is saying, he's saying what? You need to be what? Straightforward. Be honest, right? Have good words and good speech so that you won't be condemned, right? When it comes to your brothers and sisters, to avoid judgment, just refrain from saying things or making comments that are not going to bring success. Let Christ be the judge. Christ is a righteous judge. And his judge is always about restoration and restoring, right? His, he, he judges with mercy and kindness, right? I hope that bless you. I hope that this passage bless you this, uh, this, uh, in this daily devotion. Uh, I love you, and I want you to keep going. Don't quit now. Uh, but again, God bless you. Let me pray. Father God, I pray uh, that we would love others and allow you to be the judge. That we do not fall into, into condemnation. That we do not fall into sin. That we do not fall into judgment. Help us to love and build up our brothers and sisters who are going through trials and, truffle, and suffering. You're the righteous judge, and we trust you to bring restoration in their lives. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and God keep you.